in order to do alignment, uh, I have to set up the, uh, the machine first. So I want to do top side alignment. So I select here on the BSA microscope to switch it off so that I can see here on the, on the uh, screen that it says TSA for top side alignment. I can adjust the uh, exposure parameters again if I want a slightly different uh, exposure time. And then I'm ready to go. Start by pressing load. Again, follow the instructions for the slide. I load my wafer onto the chuck. And position it on the chuck. Use the enter button to switch on the vacuum. Push the slide into the machine and confirm with enter. Again, same as before with the first print, wedge error compensation is the first thing that happens. And when wedge error compensation is done, the top side microscope will move down in order to enable alignment. Since this is the first print we are doing with the alignment after we loaded the mask, I have to set up the microscope before I can do alignment. I start by positioning the objectives on the correct uh, position on top of the, uh, on top of the mask. I happen to know that my alignment marks are designed to be in a position of uh, plus minus 43 millimeters. So I can use this one to move the objective to 43 on the scale here. I do the same in the other side. And um, in this case, the uh, microscope was nicely positioned in the center of the wafer, so I actually already see my alignment marks on the screen. Uh, but otherwise, I can use the X and Y buttons here to move the microscope around. So this is what I will do. I can also look through the objectives, which give me a, a bigger field of view in order to actually find my marks. Like so. And now I can focus. Everything was pretty much already there. Otherwise, focus is done here on the knob. As you can see here, I have fine, fine uh, focus and at some point I can move it a lot. Again now I move it down and then even further and back again. If there is a difference between the focus on the uh, right and, and the uh, left image, I can use the two knobs here on the objectives to correct that, like so, in order to get a good focus on both, both images. If the microscope is tilted with respect to the mask, I can use this one to rotate the mask, as you can see on the screen, moves up and down. Like so. So now I have found the alignment marks on my mask, which means that I'm ready to align the substrate. You can see here that the design has been made so that there are arrows pointing towards my marks from uh, either direction. 
Another thing that you can see is that the design has been made so that I have a lot of open space in order to be able to see the structures that are on the, on the uh, substrate below. Which means that when I start manipulating the stage, translating with the X and Y, and rotating here with this one, I can see things move around. This is the X, this is the Y. And as you can see now, I'm going in the direction of, of the arrows, and I already have my first mark here. But the problem is that the second mark is now up, so that means I need to do some, some rotation. In this case, again, following the arrows. And once my mark, which is already in view, starts to disappear, I use the Y to correct until I have both marks aligned here. So now the rotation is nice. And now I can use X and Y to move them into the correct position. Like so. We set an alignment gap of 30 micron which means that there is a separation between the substrate and the mask of 30 microns at this moment, which means it can sometimes be difficult to have focus both on the substrate and on the mask. And you can see on the screen that if I adjust the focus, I can get a much clearer view of the, uh, of the substrate, but then the mask comes out of focus. So in order to do the fine alignment, I can set the, the uh, focus to somewhere in between. Then I move again in order to do the alignment. And maybe correct the rotation a little bit. So, when I'm satisfied with the alignment, I can do an alignment check, which means I can bring mask and substrate into contact, as it would be during exposure, in order to check that the alignment is perfect. I want to do that now by simply reducing the uh, gap, so moving it from the alignment gap between mask and wafer, so moving them into contact. So I do that on this button here, which is called align contact slash, slash exposure. When I press this one, the alignment gap will be closed and the contact light will come on when they are in contact. At this point, it's very important that there is no adjustment of the stage because that would cause the substrate and the mask to shear against each other. So that means the only thing I'm doing now is checking on the screen to see if everything is perfect. If I'm happy I can continue, if I'm not I can separate them again by pressing the same button. I wait for the uh, machine to indicate that it's good, there was a small beep. Now I can do the adjustments, adjustments that are needed like so. And once I'm satisfied with the alignment and I've checked it, I continue by pressing the exposure here in order to expose the substrate. 